now that you know what a primate is, let's start talking about the different groups within primates. So here is our primate tree. Uh, our major divisions are strepsirines and haplorines. For this lecture, we're going to focus on our strepsirines. So this is strepsirini. We have our lemurs, our lorises, and our galagos. As you can see, all of these guys are super cute. Well, overall, they tend to be pretty small. They have something called a rhinarium. Their nose is connected to their mouth. So think of the wet nose you see on a dog or a cat. These guys have them as well. They also have this weird thing called a tooth comb. So their lower teeth right here, they're all squished together and they jet straight out so they can actually use that as a comb to groom each other. They all they have this post orbital bar around their eye, but they only have that post orbital bar. As you can see in this picture, there is an open space in the back of the eye socket. So in this crania, you could stick your finger all the way through. They also have a grooming claw. So on their pointer finger or that second digit right there, they do have a claw so they can use that to scratch and groom themselves. Uh, most of these guys are nocturnal, though there are a few exceptions. But within strepsirines, we do have a few groups. So let's look at our lemurs first. So lemuroidea, they live in Madagascar. These guys are both nocturnal and diurnal. We actually see a huge range here. Um, they're small to medium, um, and they're actually a wide range of social groups. Some are solitary, and some have really large groups. Um, we also see a variety of diets. So they colonize an island, and this is something called an adaptive radiation. When there is an island with, when not much has gotten there, the people who, or the species who get there first, they will tend to radiate out and form a wide diversity of different types of species. And that's exactly what we see here with our lemurs. Um, there's many different lemurs. We have our hapa lemur or bamboo lemur, fanner, the fork marked lemur, uh, lemur, that ringtail lemur that most people are already familiar with, microcebus, the tiny little mouse lemur, um, avahi, the woolly lemur, and lepa lemur, the sportive lemur. There's even more. Um, here we have Propithecus or shifakas, injury, the injury, Dabintonia, that demon baby eye eye, and Varicia, the rough lemur. You can see Megalodapus down here in the corner. That is a fossil species, but went extinct in the past couple hundred years. Um, so we do think that uh, humans probably did come into contact with these guys, um, but it was like the native people to Madagascar when they first made it to the island. Um, these guys were actually really large, and we probably caused their demise. Um, so the other group within strepsirines are our lorises and galagos. So this is superfamily lorisoidea, um, and we can find them in both Africa and Asia. Um, so within lorisoidea, we have lorisidae. These are our lorises. These guys are nocturnal. They're pretty small, and these guys are solitary. Um, they have some of the coolest hunting strategies around. They are slow stalkers. So they like to eat insects, but they will stop their insects like this and move so slowly. And then they strike. So these guys can move quickly, but most of the time they choose not to. Um, there are a variety of diets, but we do see a lot of them eating insects. But there's also a little bit of flowers, fruit, and exudates or tree sap. Um, here are some of our lorises. We have Artisibus, the Anguantibo, uh, Loris, the Slender Loris, Paradictus, the Pato, and Nyctisibus, my personal favorite, the Slow Loris. Let's take a look, closer look at Nyctisibus here. So Nyctisibus is a genus, and here are um, all of the different color variations of the different species we know. Um, so here, this was uh, my, actually my master's project. Um, we had gotten some skins that were confiscated in, at coming into the country through customs, and they wanted some help figuring out exactly what species they were. Um, so here are all our ones. So we had a couple that were pretty sure were Nyctisibus pygmaeus, and then we have a couple others uh, clustering with our Nyctisibus bengalensis. Um, you can see our Nyctisibus kukang is strangely clustering with our bengalensis, and um, that allowed us to say, to determine that there was some incorrect species identification there. 
Um, you might have already seen Nick Cassibus a couple years ago. They went viral online because of the tickling the slow loris videos or slow loris eating a rice ball. Unfortunately, these weren't good situations for the slow loris in this situation. And these caused the illegal pet trade on the slow lorises to uh, balloon up to a really bad degree. Um, slow lorises, they actually have these glands right on their elbow that emit a poison and they will lick that and that gets into their saliva. So if they bite you, it is a nasty bite. Um, bites from slow lorises get infected and in really inflamed. So in the pet trade, you can see they actually clip their canine so they can't bite you. But this is not good for slow lorises themselves. So please do everything you can to stop the slow loris pet trade. Do not share videos of slow lorises online and help educate your friends if they are sharing them. Visit this website to sign the pledge to help save the slow loris. Let's also talk about our Galagids in family Galagidae, sister to Larissidae. These are our Galagos, our bush babies. These guys are nocturnal. Um, they are known for being really good leapers, um, and these guys are solitary. We see a variety of diets here, but a lot of fruit, insects, and again, our exudates, our tree sap. Here are some of our Galagos. We have Otolemur, the greater Galago, Galago, the lesser Galago, Paragalago, the eastern dwarf Galago, Galagoides, the western dwarf Galago, and Euodicus, the needle claws Galago. Um, Euodicus has a really cool story here. So Euodicus, um, classically, we had no idea where it fell in the primate uh, with relationships to other primates. Um, and here are three uh, previous phylogenies, and it's, Euodicus is just all over the place. Um, so a good friend of mine, Luca Pazzi, um, he did a really intensive phylogeny of our Galagos here, and he helped figure out that Euodicus goes right here. And it's really basal to um, all of our Galagos here. He also put, noticed that there are actually what used to be one genera, the Galagoides, which should be split into two because we're seeing them cluster in two different places. And you can see here, um, he Move, we got to rename some of them into Paragalago, which is one of the most exciting things you can do in biology is to name a genus. Um, and lastly, I do want to point out that our Galagos kind of look like gremlins. Gremlins were probably modeled off of our Galagos here. Um, so let's go back and remember, so our Strepsorines, they are one of these two main branches of our primate tree. Strepsorines are sister to haplorines. And in the next video, we're gonna talk about our haplorines. But before we go, can you explain what traits do strepsorines have?